Good morning, YouTube. This is Debbie Gruber from Lassa Nat Ceramics, and I wanted to show you what our beautiful Christmas tree looks like since it's been fired. And again, this is done with the glaze I N1036 Bluegrass. And then I put the little bobs in, remember, and I glued them, and, but you never glue the star so it doesn't break off on the off season. And now I'm going to take you the rest of the way. You know, some people would consider this tree to be like top, to be finished. And that's okay if, you, if this is how you like your tree. You're in charge of how you make your tree or how you want me to make it for you. I said, but in my world, I always like to put snow on my trees. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm also going to show you how to finish out this base. So I'm going to start with the base because there's dry time of course in there that we have to wait for this red to dry. I like to put a different color on this very bottom rim here and today I'm just going to use red because honestly I like it the best. I think it looks really nice, you know, nice and Christmassy. And then the little berries of course they get a red coat on there. Okay, so I'm just going to pour some of this um, Doc Holiday. you know this is my favorite paint in the world, Doc Holiday to red. And I'm going to put it on there. I'm just going to grab a brush. Oh, this nice round one. I, I kind of like these round ones. They, they paint on real nice. And I'm going to roll the paint onto my brush, see? And, you know, just kind of get a nice level uh, layer of paint. And then I'm going to, I'm going to start at this end cause just because it's easier. And I'm going to put my papers down. And then, again, I'm going to move my papers to where I want it to go. And then I'm just going to drag it backwards. See how nice and crisp my line is? And then as I have to turn, I have to pick up. So I'm going to move it again back where I want it to go and then bring it back. I'm not picking it up. I'm just bringing it back until it's uncomfortable. And then I want to spread this out because blobs of paint, remember, they're the enemy and we don't want them on our piece. We want to keep the paint nice and smooth, which is the reason why it, this is a soft bristle brush. Soft bristles on a smooth surface make the paint go on smooth. If you use a stiff brush, it leaves the blobs, you know, the enemy. You don't want them on there. And I'm just going to come back until I'm uncomfortable. And then I'm going to pick it up and move it away from the piece so I don't mess it up. And then again, roll some more paint on there and just go around until I get the whole bottom section of this painted. Okay, so you get the idea of that. And then I'm going to let this dry, and then if it needs more coats, well, sure, I'll put more coats on there. And remember, if you, if you have to say, ask yourself, gee, do I need another coat? You know you need another coat. Just put another coat on there and be done with it. <laughs> but I can continue this off camera and just keep this all um, nice and solid, nice and red. And I bring the paint around to the bottom of the base. And the reason that I do that is when you put this up on a shelf, say if you have it lifted, and people can see just a little bit underneath your tree, if they see a spot that's missing paint, that's the part that their eye will always go to. So you want to keep it as perfect as you can and, and not have that issue. Oh, but I probably should show you this when you go around this part here. You know, I just kind of want to take a smaller brush, you know, whichever one you're comfortable with. Again, a soft bristle brush and bring it in and just come in around here like this. But one thing that's really nice is if you get a little bit of the wrong color on your glaze, like this, I'm gonna go right over it. See what I did? You're like, oh, well, you gotta do is just wave it off. Isn't that cool? But you gotta get it right away before it sets. <laughs> and then you just keep going and get it or go around again, bringing your paint down to the bottom. Smooth this out so you don't have any upraised paint or blobbles, see? and just come around to meet where I, I'll take it to where I started today so you can see what I'm talking about. Just bring that around. It's not hard at all, just takes a little practice. Just take your time. You know, I go probably faster than you will because geez, I've made quite a few of these. <laughs> I could age myself and tell you, but I won't. <laughs> all right, almost done. And then I'll take you to the berries. There we go. Perfect. Very nice. Okay. And then, clean my brush out so I don't have a mess. And then I'm going to take out my small brush. I'll use the same one I had here. And just get some color on these little berries right here. See? You can use a smaller brush if you want to. But this one works for me. I like to put it on kind of thick on here. Just make sure it doesn't run. Because the red is uh, one of those colors that you need multiple coats on. Is it worth it? Yeah, I always go to the red because I like the way it looks when it's finished. So if I have to put in a couple extra coats, then I'll put in a couple extra coats, you know? <laughs> it looks great. And then I'm just gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm gonna show you how to put the snow on the tree. And then uh, I'll bring this over and move this out of our way. 
This is no tax. You can get it here. You can get it. You know, there's a lot of I don't know, craft stores that have this stuff. And it looks like a, like small curd cottage cheese. And I just kind of mix that up. And I'm going to use a stiffer brush when I use this stuff because this stuff doesn't want to stay on your tree. It wants to go back on your paintbrush. So you kind of have to fight it a little bit. And then I have this beautiful glitter. You can use any kind of fine white glitter that you like. I like this. So I just stick it in the lid here. And then I'm going to grab, I kind of go down one side because then when I go down the side, I can tilt this this way and pinch the glitter and get it all the way on all of that stuff, which I'll show you right now. And remember, you know, people especially that live in Ohio, you've seen a million trees that have snow on them. You know, so don't be afraid to let your imagination go because whatever you put on here, if it comes from you, it's always right. So don't be afraid to put it on here. You know, some parts of your tree might be a little heavier with snow because it's been sitting on there. But maybe a wind came through and blew some of your snow off on the side. It just doesn't matter. Snow is like that. But always remember that you do get snow on your bulbs because the snow's gonna, gonna stop naturally and say don't land on the bulbs. It's gonna land on the bulbs. So I deliberately put it on the bulbs, see? And then if I have like a, a blob that falls down, as long as it falls down in a way where I can keep it on the tree, I'll do that because it's kind of like a natural looking thing. And I, I just put a lot on because I like the way it looks. It just, see, look, there's a blob. <laughs> it just looks nice, you know? So I'm gonna look, I just smashed that in a little bit so it sticks. And I left it like that. And I'm kind of going to go around the whole tree like this and put it wherever you want to. It just doesn't matter. It could be a lot of snow or a little snow. Some people just kind of put a little bit of snow on the edges only, just like this. You know, and that's beautiful too. It's totally up to you, whatever you want to do to your tree. So I can do that and just cover it up and put some more. Or again, I could put more snow on one side than the other. Doesn't matter. And get some up in here because sometimes it'll stick up there. But make sure you keep this clear. So it'll probably be a good idea to stick your star back in so you don't make a mistake. There, that'll stop you from making it oops. <laughs> and just put this stuff on, just like this. Okay, I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna wanna put the glitter on because I don't want to um, have that dry too much. This stuff does take a while to dry, but like the inside, you know, where you have it clumpy is where it really takes time to dry, not so much the outside. But see how beautiful that is? And I'm just gonna tilt it back. I'm gonna grab some of my glitter and I'm just gonna sprinkle the glitter right on top. And I'm not going to mess with this glitter. I'm going to leave this alone until like tomorrow. I'm an excessive dryer. So I'll leave it dry overnight. And then the next day you can blow off all the extra glitter that's on there. I try to catch it with paper, but there's not that much to see. I try to get it on there nice and thick. I like things to be sparkly. At Christmas, especially at Christmas time, it should be sparkly. You see? And that's how you do that. And I'll, I'll do another section for you. I'll turn the star so it looks pretty. <laughs> And don't be afraid to put this stuff on. Just go with it. You know, wherever it goes, it, it just kind of goes. And it does make a mess, but that's all right. I'm just going to throw this towel right in the garbage. No big deal. There, see? It is a beautiful tree. These vintage trees are so, so pretty. When, especially at night when you have these all lit up and all that glitter is sparkling around. It's just beautiful. The colors are bright and vibrant. Just got to put a light in on the base and you're all set and ready to go. Look, I almost have the whole tree done already. I'm over halfway. See? Nice. Okay. I'm going to put the glitter on. I'm just going to tilt it back so I'm going to put my hand where I don't have anything. And I can rest it on the bulbs because remember, I glued the bulbs in last time. So you know they're excessively dried and they're dry. <laughs> so now you can do this. Put a whole bunch of glitter on there. And that's it. That's our finished tree. And then I'm going to go back here. I'm going to show you what to do with these little berries. I like to make the little berries look real. So I'm going to take the black paint now, and I'm going to put it a little bit on my plate, just a little bit, because I only want to make lines around the berries to make the berries look real. So I'm just going to take my small paintbrush, and I'm going to put a little paint on there. Again, I'm going to roll it on here so I get a nice, even layer of paint. But I don't want a lot of paint. I just want a little bit because I'm going to outline these three berries. So I'm going to go through the inside just by, I'm trying to make it so you can see, but at the same time, I have to see too. <laughs> so I'm doing this, see where I'm making the line. So you can see that there's three berries now. See where over there, it just kind of looks like a blob, see? And then I'm going to outline it because that'll make these little berries pop off of the green on this, on these holly leaves, see? And then I'm just going to take a little bit of paint on the tip of my brush. I'm going to wipe this off and just get the tip full of paint. And I'm going to make three little dots. Try kind of sort of in the center of the berry. See one, and there's two, 
and three. See, that looks like little berries now. So I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side so we have all the berries done. Just outline this little thing here. Make sure you cover all the red. You don't want to see any red on the other side of your black line. Otherwise, then it looks fake. And remember, I, I like to make everything look as real as I can, unless I'm doing something that's not supposed to. And I put my little dots on the berries. Okay, that's perfect, see? And now I take a little bit of white paint, just the titanium white Americana like I always use, and put a little bit here. I'm just going to make a little line on there, which will represent the light. I've talked to people about the light, and what we're going to do is put the light in there. There. And I'm just going to make a little line on these little tiny berries, just a little tiny little line, on the same spot, more or less, on the berries. However your light hits is okay. Just use your imagination and make your light hit in the same place on each berry. And they're a little different on both sides. It doesn't matter as long as they're all together. But see, isn't that pretty? And those are your berries. I'm going to clean my paintbrush off. So I'm going to leave the little ones in the paintbrush container. That will hurt the paintbrush. And then this is our finished tree. But I'll turn it where the snow is. <laughs> see? Isn't it beautiful? So that's our tree, and it's FM581. And of course, we do have this tree available for you to purchase online, and I ship throughout the United States. Just go to the website, lokceramics.com, and click on Christmas, and then you can click on trees or, or another category, whatever you'd like to look at. And you can call in and phone and order, or you can order right through the website. So I hope to hear from you all soon, and thanks a lot for watching. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for watching our video today. Real quick before the up next video starts playing, do us a favor and smash the like and share buttons. If you want to see more of our content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you're notified when we post new content. If you want to start your own project or just order some supplies, check out our store at www.lokceramics.com. Hope to see you in the next video.